joined by Violent J of ICP. You, you may know him for their music. You may know him for their appearances in various wrestling promotions, WWE, WCW. Just saw you in, in MLW for, for a little cameo earlier this year. Uh, JCW Lunacy is, is the new project you have going on. And I'm excited to not only talk about the show itself, but I kind of want to get your opinion on some of the influences on the show, some of the talent you see on the show. Uh, this feels like a party. Like it, it's not just a wrestling show. There's feels very underground. Uh, I I've been to one of the shows in the past. Uh, ac actually the show was in Columbus a few years ago. Feel it still very much has that like live event feel, even though I was watching this one at home. Uh, Talk to me about what what the the big goal is for JCW Lunacy moving forward. You have this weekly show; it's going to be presented. Uh, it looks like in, in season format. Uh, tell tell me about just in the beginning. <clears throat> um, our goal is to to uh, receive respect and entertain wrestling fans, not just juggalos. You know, mm -hmm. you know, we've been doing this twenty seven years. JCW has been a national wrestling company, an independent wrestling company, you know, and I'm going back to when there wasn't hardly any national companies, you know what I mean? When all you had was Ring of Honor just coming out and um, TNA <clears throat> just basically coming out. And um, we were a national company. You know, nowadays there's there's several national companies, you know what I'm saying? And they're doing well, you know, but we, we come from a time when there wasn't hardly any, you know, we've been doing live stream shows and pay-per-views for 27 years man and um nationally touring too not not wrestling i mean not just concerts uh but wrestling tours you know what i mean mm -hmm. from from coast to coast jcw has been touring and juggalo championship wrestling the word juggalo is just a term that some people choose to call themselves you know it's no different than if we were to call our shit generation x wrestling or rebellion wrestling or deep south wrestling or anything it's just a, a type of person that chooses to call themselves that you know but it's definitely not just for juggalos you know it's for wrestling fans first and foremost you know and uh we want our respect man it, like like because i care about wrestling fans because icp were wrestlers before we we made music you know we were both independent wrestlers on the midwest you know and um, before we ever painted our face like clowns, we were professional wrestlers first, you know. And um, it's where our love is, you know. And and um, like I said, we've been doing this over twenty five years, and for, for the for the great most of it, we feel like we've been ignored. And I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. You know, I don't want to sound like a Kurt crybaby because we're very fortunate and we're very blessed to have any audience we have, let alone the the massive juggalo audience that we have. But like. I remember one time we put 4,500 people in the rave in Milwaukee, and that's really good numbers for an independent show, really fucking good, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And when we did that, the way I remember, we didn't make a blip of noise anywhere in the a, in a wrestling media, you know? And two weeks later, ECW came, and at this point, they had done a pay-per-view in the same building, and they drew roughly the same crowd, and New Jack jumped off the balcony, and it was huge news everywhere. And everybody was talking about how incredible it was for ECW to draw this crowd, you know. And we had just done it two weeks earlier and, and for a wrestling show, not a concert, you know. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get a blip of noise or, or, or coverage or anything. Four of our guys went to the hospital that night. You know, we just really turned up for that crowd, man. And um, we didn't get any attention for it, you know. We've also, to the best of our knowledge, we've run the biggest legend show in the history of pro wrestling or what i mean by that and i know that sounds fucking crazy saying it believe me i know it sounds nuts but until i hear of a legend show with more active competitors to shut me up in that claim i'm gonna keep saying it you know because i'm not talking about a convention where we had guys signing autographs i'm talking about active competitors you know we did a show called legends and icons and it was a terrible show it's on pay-per-view it is a, a train wreck of a show but to see the guys come down the aisle one more time, man, we had everybody. We only had like two or three singles matches on that show because there was so much talent we had to use. We had to do like eight-man Royal Rumble things. We had an eight-man tag. We had, you know, so much going on in that show because we had so much talent to use, you know. 
And I just think that um, for a promotion that's been around as long as we have and done the things we have, I wish we had a little more, um, you know, uh, notoriety in, in wrestling than we do, you know, because it's not fair to the guys. It's not fair to the hard workers, wrestlers that have been putting out for us for years, you know. We've had great world champions, you know, guys like Terry Funk, Sabu, Trent Acid, you know, <clears throat> just countless guys, you know. And, and um, and so Lunacy's goal, to answer your question, is to get that respect, man, in, in the form of um, we've got eight 45-minute episodes that are coming out once a week right now. As you said, you guys are premiering episode three today, you know, and um, – after those eight come out, as soon as those eight come out, it'll be November, and we're doing a once a week live stream from Detroit on Tuesday mm -hmm. nights for a year straight. You know, and we're not always going to do them from Detroit. We're going to travel. We're going to take them out here and there, but Detroit will basically be the home base. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to do a live stream once a week from Detroit. We've also got a nine city tour leaving the end of October. The sec uh, uh, October 23rd, it starts up until the 31st. And um, it's nine cities of ICP concerts and JCW wrestling. Before the concert, we have the wrestling. And each one of those shows are being live streamed, you know, the whole card, mm -hmm. right up till October 30th, which we have a pay-per-view coming from Detroit called Devil's Night. We've got some really big names on that pay-per-view and um, we're hoping that the uh, the live streams leading up to it will help the pay-per-view do good, you know what I mean, and, mm -hmm. and get people involved in the storylines and everything. And if you watch the Lunacy episodes, they'll all be out by then. And then you're going to watch the live streams every day if, you, if you're interested in it. And the live streams will keep you going up till the pay-per-view. And then after that, we'll be doing our weekly show every week, a whole card. Lunacy then becomes, instead of a 45-minute show, it becomes a, a whole card, you know what I mean, every week. Mm. And um, we're giving this everything we got, man. And the thing is, and throughout the 27 years we've been doing this, there'd be times when JCW was really hot, you know, but then we'd have to dial down because it would be time to do another album or another tour or whatever. So we'd have to kind of pull back from wrestling and focus on music again. And so there, there's been times where we've been a lot stronger with JCW than we have in the past. But the goal this time is to never go away. You know, like when ICP mm -hmm. has to leave, JCW will still be up and running. You know what I mean? We've got guys now in the office full time that are helping us. And um, we're the plan is to keep things running full time now. Not we're not going away this time. Mm -hmm. No matter what ICP's uh, tied up in, JCW will still be there. You know, mm -hmm. and um, we're gonna do this thing for real, man. And, and we want the respect Billy Cork and, and them are getting with NWA. You know, he's a rock star running a a wrestling promotion on rock star money, and ICP is no different. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. NWA gets respect and gets its rating, his rankings published on these websites and stuff like that. We want that too. We want wrestling magazines to cover our rankings and, and we want to show people that we're serious about wrestling. It's just called, it's called juggalo championship wrestling. doesn't mean it deserves any less respect than any other promotion out here, you know, mm -hmm. and we know the only way to get respect is to deliver on the product. So that's what we're planning to do, you know, for wrestling fans first mm -hmm. before juggalos, you know, and that's our goal brother with lunacy mentioned uh the the tour leading into halloween and and the pay-per-view you, you're going to be in nashville birmingham alabama little rock uh nine all, all that's all leading up to the pay-per-view and then you have a, a halloween night date at the masonic in detroit so a lot, right. of, a lot of stuff coming up but you you mentioned billy corgan that's kind of where i was gonna lead next uh there's a really heavy NWA influence on the show as far as talent's concerned. You have Joe Golly doing commentary, which, you know, side note, I really enjoy him, especially Me on the show, because he kind of gets to cut loose a little more than you're used to. Exactly. How much has that relationship helped? Because fans might know that you uh, you you did some appearances for NWA last year. You were with the yeah. Brothers of Funstruction. How has that relationship with uh, NWA and Billy helped JCW grow since you, you started, you know, working together on a more close basis. 
it helped a lot because I got to see what he was doing, you know, and no disrespect to them. Those guys are hellified organized. Those guys mm -hmm. are really serious about what they're doing, you know. But I was watching that operation and I was like, I can do this. We've been doing this. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We've been doing this and I can do this, you know, no different than what he's doing, just our flavor and our, and our style, you know. But there's benefits to playing rock clubs as opposed to a lot of these venues, wrestling, wrestling uh, promotions run. You know, we touring is something we've been doing for, for 33 years. You know, we have touring down so we can tour this company. We have those those routes dug out. You know what I mean? And we have relationships with venues all over the country. And venues always have great sound systems and great lighting and things like that. So our shows feel like that. They feel like a party. You know what I mean? And um, when I was watching NWA, I would think to myself, oh, I would do this if I were them, or I would do this differently, or I would do more of this, things like that. Mm -hmm. And just appearing there really fired me up. Honestly, it fired me up to want to do this and do this in a big way. And I felt a a, a a debt of gratitude to, to Billy Corgan and to NWA for that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I tried to work something out with them. I, I, I even offered to be sort of like their, if we could work out some kind of relationship where we would be their, their NXT or sort of like their training ground or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. I told Bill, if you want to give guys tryouts and stuff, you can do them on our shows. If you want, if you want to work out new gimmicks, you can have the guys come do it on our shows and, and we could have some sort of affiliation, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, but they weren't interested, you know, so we we're doing our thing and we're doing our thing strong. And I think a lot of the NWA, um, uh, likenesses also come from, um, working with Kerry Morton. All mm -hmm. right. Kerry Morton is a guy that I hired early, when, when, we, when we started coming back with JCW full-time, you know, and um, that's why a lot of the talent is similar. And But I think the further we go, the further we get away from that. You know what I mean? Like, the, the further I haven't um, been affiliating with NWA, I think more and more we're kind of getting getting away from the way mm -hmm. they do things. You know, I've been, I've been talking a lot with Brett from GCW, you know, mm -hmm. and I love picking his brain and I could do that for hours. You know, I like to consider him a, a friend of mine and um, I admire the fuck out of GCW brother, you know, and, and if I could get my company anywhere, I would like to be where they are to where they put a show on people know what to expect before they even announce any talent. Mm -hmm. They know what to expect from GCW. They know you're going to get a level of entertainment guaranteed from a GCW show. And I want JCW to have similar, um, a similar reputation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so, but, um, we're not very big into death matches anymore. You know what I mean? I, 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 uh, I, I, I personally only like to see death match stuff in like blow offs and things like that. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, every promotion is different. Every promotion has its own feel and its own taste and flavor. And JCW is no different, man. But I take I take influence from everybody, from MLW. I like the efficiency and the organization they had in their shows. I like to watch it all. I, I check it out and watch the way they were doing their vignettes and their promos and how they come in and set it up and shoot it and leave. And I'd watch it all and kind of follow them around and and just I'm taking pieces from all these promotions. You know what I mean? And, and trying to um, I was even trying to learn things from AAA when I went down there. And, and and did a show with them, you know what I mean? I was trying to learn from all these promotions, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, I thank them all. I, but I probably thank Brett the most because um, he's been the most open with me as far as giving me advice and things like that. You know what I mean? I really like Brett. Mm -hmm. it, it's interesting how you, you mentioned your your views on Deathmatch have changed because one of the things, like I I remember learning about you through music, but then. The, the influence that strangle mania had on a lot of fans like me, like it, it was a huge thing back then because I was watching like primarily WWF and like what I'd seen on TV. And then this whole, not only introduced me to, to death matches or like ja Japanese stuff, but like tape trading in general, it sort yeah. of broke you into like, how, how do you feel about, you know, having an influence on that specific area of wrestling where, you know, you're, you're doing commentary over matches and it sort of hit, it, it's like a grassroots thing or almost like you would call it viral now, but 
Yeah. How do you feel about, you know, Strangle Mania and your influence on those genres of wrestling? It's so funny, man, because when I try to tell people about Strangle Mania now, they don't really understand that when that came out, nobody had seen that. Mm -hmm. Nobody had seen Deathmatch Wrestling then, you know? It was so rare. When I saw that magazine ad and that little corner page ad said exploding rings, barbed wire, thumbtacks, broken glass, I was thinking to myself, bullshit, this can't be real. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of anything like that. You know what I mean? And I thought, I ordered like four tapes of it. And honest to God, I thought that shit was going to come back and be like animated. I thought it might have been something from Japan where it's cartoons and, and they're like, that's what kind of matches they were talking about. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to expect. That's how rare and brand new deathmatch wrestling was back at this time. You know, mm -hmm. and when I saw that footage, I could not believe it was all real and it had no commentary over it. It was all just pro shot with no commentary. Mm -hmm. So me and Shaggy went and did the commentary. And what made that, that DVD or, or video work was not only was it funny what we were doing, but the footage itself was mind blowing for the time. Nobody had seen that shit, you know. Mm -hmm. So that thing went multi platinum for us. Like, if, if it wasn't bootlegged and it was officially put out, it would have probably been three times platinum by now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, it just did so successful. But since then, so much has happened with death matches, and it's 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 now such a staple of wrestling that um, you know, I don't I don't really know what it is, but I feel like it's it's a battle that if we were to make that our focus there's no way we could compete with GCW in that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they've got that sewed up, you know? And I'm a gimmick guy. I, I'm a big fan of gimmick, gimmicks and gear and good-looking gear and good gimmicks and, and uh, storylines. I'm really big on storylines and stuff like that. And I am not a fan of legit pain, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I tell the guys in the back before the show, I say that. I say, I'm not a fan of legit pain, and I don't want anybody out there showing off like that, you know? Like, I don't want anybody out there, you know, pulling each other's hair out, clumps of hair and shit. It's just not necessary, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's needed. And um, a lot of guys like to go out there, and, you know, death matches are doing things now with fucking needles and everything you know and i just don't want to see that as a fan i personally don't want to see it you know guys actually hurting and shit you know what i mean mm -hmm. maybe it's because i'm a pussy i don't know what it is but i don't I, I just don't like that i think that the art artistry of it comes by not being in real pain you know what i mean yeah. and so anyway i just i like to use death matches you know but like as much as we use like nick gage he's not doing any death matches on this tour except for the, the, the pay-per-view, I believe, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because um, I like to save it for something special. And I think that's where we're different a little way, you know what I mean? So when we do it, I like to think it means something or whatever. Plus, I can never compete with, with these other guys at, at that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Without somebody seriously getting hurt, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I, I think another part of it is it's okay to just have your taste change over time. Like, you might have gravitated towards that when you're younger but maybe now especially you know you're looking at it as a fan and a businessman like you you know like you just told me like you're not going to be able to compete on a certain level or that's not what you look for in yeah wrestling. i wouldn't want to ask guys to try to outdo anything like that you mm -hmm. know what i mean i don't want <clears throat> I, I, I there will be death match wrestling when it's somebody's specialty again like nick gage you know when, when that's what they love to do or, or madman pondo you know what I mean? We'll always do stuff like that if that's what they prefer to do. But I just don't like asking guys to go out there and do something like that. I think we can still entertain the audience without having to do that every time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got a couple more questions for you. I did want to talk about uh, some recent comments that Eric Bischoff said he, he could see you in the WWE Hall of Fame. I just wanted to get your thoughts on on having him endorse you in that way. I just can't even believe that. First of all, this is going to sound crazy, but it's the truth. Eric Bischoff is one of my top favorite five people. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know him on a personal level, mm -hmm. but I've read his book and I listen to his podcast all the time. And I find myself agreeing with a lot of what he says, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the ways he says it, you know, 
I never thought we had a, a uh, chance of ever being in the WWE Hall of Fame, right? I, I it's all I never thought that would that, that would be a reality. But as time goes by, I start to think, what if, you know, because I'm only 52 and another 20 years of being in this business, you know, in 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 if in the future, if I can last to be fucking 72, you know what I mean? And we keep putting it down the way we're, 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 we've been doing, and we keep doing the things with wrestling that we've been doing. We, that just might happen one day. You know what I mean? It, it's crazy to think it, it couldn't. I don't think it, I, I think it's not likely, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I don't want to say it's impossible either because we have done a lot in wrestling when you look back on it. You know what I mean? We've done a lot. And I'm not talking about being in the Hall of Fame as a wrestler. I'm talking about in the celebrity wing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we were there. We were in WCW. We were in ECW. We've been to Ring of Honor and TNA and fucking everywhere. You know, Japan, Mexico. We've done it all. And, and um, so I, I don't know what the future holds. And it would be so dope. And I'm so honored that he said that. I don't know if he was serious about it, but it would be so dope. It, I mean, come on. It probably mean more to me than being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, honestly. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? To be in the uh, WWE Hall of Fame it would just be next level, man. I'm. I mean, if Kid Rock's in it, what the fuck is he doing in it? And we're not. You know what I mean? That's an honest argument I will make because we have so much more to do with wrestling than him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm not. I, I I don't expect to be in it. You know what I mean? I'm not like how come we ain't in it type mm -hmm. of shit. It would be a huge fucking honor and awesome to. to to be asked to be in it one day you know what i mean yeah yeah you and you know you you've been you mentioned a bunch of the companies that you have appeared in you're doing your own thing with jcw as far as wrestling goes is there something that you wish people would talk more about because there, there's all these talking points about how you got into wwe how you left things you did in wcw like there there's popular talking points that come up all the time is there one that when it's related to re pro wrestling, you want more people to talk about as yeah. far as ICP or individually? Yeah, JCW. Because <clears throat> honestly, like like the things I'm saying about JCW is true. And, and, and maybe it doesn't sound so big of a deal now in today's world when there's all these national companies. But we were doing them when there wasn't any, man, when it was next to impossible, you know. We were a national company, you know, running pay-per-views. Mm -hmm. Even we, before pay-per-views were a thing and nobody was running pay-per-views we were running them all the time it just was happening in the juggler world so people didn't know it or they didn't care you know what i mean mm -hmm. but i want jcw to get its props man like you know jcw is the only company i know of that wc that, that had its world championship title defended twice on nitro i don't know of any other wrestling company that w that ever had their world title defended in wcw I don't know of any other company, you know, and maybe AWA when they did that show together or whatever, but they defend, you know, Vampiro defended our belt twice on Nitro, you know, and it was acknowledged by the commentators. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I love that shit, man. Like I, I want people to take JCW serious. Like I want people to um consider it a real promotion just because we wear clown paint and we're wild. That's just our artistic decision as artists but it doesn't mean the whole company is a joke it doesn't mean the whole company isn't real it doesn't mean it's a joke or it don't count everything that makes a real company real we we're there in every sense of it you know mm -hmm. everything that, that should earn a comp an independent company respect we've done and we do you know what i mean and um especially when it comes to take care, care of legends and things like that you know people make fun of us they say you know yeah, that shit is gathering. You know, wrestling don't even start till two in the morning. Ah, they laugh at it. You know, people just don't understand, man. The gathering is a night event. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? People sleep during the day. It's hot as fuck. The main stage gets over at midnight. That's when it begins. You know what I mean? That's when the gathering begins is at midnight. So, you know, just when you just look at the one thing, wrestling didn't start till two in the morning. It sounds like it was a clusterfuck and everything was late. And you know what I mean? But it's not mm -hmm. the way it works, man. It's just a different animal at the gathering. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just want, <clears throat> I just wish JCW had, I wish people understood more and knew that um, 
Man, we're doing everything we're supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We've had we've had everybody who's everybody. We had the Young Bucks versus the world's greatest tag team when that was the hottest two teams in the world. You know what I mean? <clears throat> we had them facing each other, and the things we do, they, a lot of it is just unknown of forever. Like I was telling you about the legends, mm-hmm. you know, that stuff means a lot to us. The number of wrestlers who had their last match in JCW, you know, Roddy Piper's last match ever was JCW, you know, Kamala's last match ever was in JCW. These are huge honors to us, man. Enormous fucking honors. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, we've done really cool stuff, man. One time Muda came all the way from Japan just to wrestle in JCW. And I'm just touched by that shit. You know what I mean? Like, I can't believe that man would get on a plane and do that shit for us, you know? And um, maybe I sound crazy just saying this stuff, but I just wish that, that um, it just doesn't seem like any other national company in America that's been around as long as we have and done the stuff we've done, the amount of pay-per-views and live streams and tours and mm-hmm. uh, sold the tickets we've sold and things like that. Seems like they would be way up um, respected more th- than we are. You know, but the painted face and the juggalo thing just automatically causes so much damage to to our credibility. You know what I mean? And I don't really think that's fair because um, we've proven ourselves over and over. There's never been a year that's gone by that we haven't run at least five shows. Mm-hmm. Not a year that's gone by. You know what I mean? And that's at our most least amount. You get it? of us not doing anything. That's the least amount of shows we've ran. Mm -hmm. And at our most, it's probably over a hundred. So I just feel like we, we've been doing this man. And any company other than us that's been doing it this long might be a little more respected than we, than we are. And so that's really what my wish would be, you know, but ICP, we seem like we're getting our flowers now. Like we're getting, we're getting a lot of props lately. I'm at the, here in New York about to do the video uh, MTV video music awards, you know, mm-hmm. we've never walked that red carpet in our life. We're about mm-hmm. to walk it today, you know? So after 33 years being in the music business, we're just now walking MTV's red carpet for the first time. Right. So we're still making progress. You know what I mean? And, and I, w- I want it to happen in wrestling now more than anything. You know what I mean? That's really what it is. Well, I'm glad you're getting that opportunity. That that's obviously a very cool honor, but I will say JCW lunacy is on YouTube. Go check it out. Like if anybody's watching this or, you know, it, it's free, it's on YouTube, very easy to watch. You get to see f- right away, like what kind of show it is. I said at the top of the call, like it, it's a party. It's it, there's wrestling, there's violence, there's foul language. Like, you know, it, it's a fun environment. I would encourage people to check it out. Uh, anything you want to plug or promote before we get out of here? I mentioned the, the tour coming yeah, fo- up. Follow me on Instagram. I'm at violentj.icp. And um, we don't use chairs around the ring. We have standing room only, like a bit, like a, and there's like a barricade around the ring. Mm-hmm. It sort of creates like a concert element. You know what I mean? And, um, um, but if you want to sit down, there's always places to sit down, you know what I mean? But, but around the ring and everything, it's like a concert. And um, it's a lot of fun, man. You, you worded it perfectly, brother, when you said it's like a party, because it is, man. And I just think people sometimes get confused about who's invited to that party. Because the number one thing about a juggalo is everybody's accepted, nobody's rejected, you know? There's no, like, people think, oh, if you're not one of them, they're going to fuck you up. It couldn't be further from the truth. If you're not one of them, they're going to try to make you one of them by showing you the best time ever, man. You know what I'm saying? They're going to, they're going to, they're going to give you the best experience of your life to, to, to welcome you, you know? And that's where people are most mistaken. They think if you're not a juggalo, you're in some sort of danger or something. And it just couldn't be anything further from the truth, man. Juggalos are the most um, welcoming, loving fucking people on the planet, man. And, and um, yeah, man, I, I'm just excited. I, I'm excited by the challenge, too. I want to show that that we can do this and that we're the real deal. 
So, you know, I, I, I'm up, I'm up for that. I'm not asking for any free handouts. I don't want any respect that we don't earn. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, if we, if somebody gives us their time and checks out our show, I'm sure they'll find something they like about it.